Let me fill up a few gaps in the last lecture. So, for example, uh, this was I had discussed this uh, uh, card game, bridge game. There was an example uh, uh, number 2.7, which uh, uh, was talking about a game of bridge, in which 26 cards have been dealt to people, uh, to the players A and C. So, remember there were 4 players A, B, C, D. So, uh, 26 cards have been dealt to the players A and C, with 7 clubs. So, we wanted to compute the probability that player B gets 4 clubs. Right. Now, um, I was trying to uh, say that this can be, uh, the, I was trying to show this as an example of uh, computing a conditional probability. That is, uh, already um, 7 clubs have been dealt to players A and C. So, what is the probability of getting uh, B getting 4 clubs? But um, now, I wanted to then show you that, and of course, we solved out the problem. I told you that this is the probability, but then um, it was not uh, possible to explain this through the conditional probability argument. So, therefore, I just want to uh, tell you that there are other ways of um, computing this probability, and that is by reducing the sample space. So, now instead of uh, you know uh, taking the um, uh, distribution of 52 cards to the 4 players, I am just reducing the sample space, because 26 more uh, 26 cards are now left, out of which 6 are clubs, because 7 have already been distributed to players A and C. So, uh, then uh, this is now your uh, multinomial uh, distribution. So, what you are saying is that, um, out of 6 clubs, B should get 4 and then from the remaining 20 cards, he should get the other 9 cards. So, that way he'll, he gets 13 cards. So, this is the number of ways in which he can get 4 clubs out of 6 and 9 cards out of the remaining other 20 cards. So, this is the number of ways in which he can uh, this can happen and the total number of ways in which he can get 13 cards out of 26 is 26 choose 13. So, this is the actual probability and this we can get by reducing the sample space. So, this is another technique which is very helpful at times you can very easily compute the required probability by doing this. right? So, you do not have to always go through the, um, uh, 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 the formula, uh, the actual formula. You can always play around with uh, alternative ideas also. Okay. Now, um, uh, in the remember I asked you to uh, construct examples, uh, when we were talking of independence, independence of 3 sets. right? And in that case, I showed you that there are 4 conditions, which have to be satisfied. Uh, before you can say that the 3 sets are independent. And then I asked you to construct a counter example to show that, suppose uh, the first 3 are satisfied, uh, the last 3 are satisfied. That means, pair wise uh, if you choose any 2 sets from here, they are independent. They satisfy the condition of independence. That means, your uh, probability of E intersection f is P E into P f, P a uh, probability of E intersection g is p probability of e into probability of g and similarly probability of f intersection g is a product of the probabilities p f into p g so um, you can construct situations where let's say last three conditions are satisfied but the fourth one uh, the first one is not satisfied and so um, um, i've been able to lay my hands on this example here suppose your um, sample space consists of these four numbers so, when each number is equally likely, that means the probability of uh, any number coming up as a uh, result of the experiment has probability 1 by 4, because they are equally likely and there are 4 elements in omega, your sample space. Now, let us choose E to be as uh, consisting of the numbers 1, 4, F to be uh, consisting of the numbers 2, comma 4 and G 3, comma 4. Right. In that case, you see if you um, uh, see the probability of P e, P f and P g is 1 by 2, because there are 2 numbers totally 4. So, 2 by 4, again we are using the same concept, because uh, outcomes are all equally likely. Therefore, I am using the m by n version of the probability. And so, uh, this is half for each of the sets. Then uh, probability e intersection f, now e and f have only 4 in common. So, that is 1 singleton and that probability is 1 by 4, which is the product of P e into P f. So, similarly you see that the pair wise independence has been, uh, you can easily verify that the, the 3 sets are pair wise independent. But when you write um, E intersection f intersection g, that again results in a single number 4, 
and so this probability is 1 by 4, but this is not equal to P e into P f into P j, which is 1 by 8. Okay. So, I, and therefore, now you get an idea and you, you should try to construct one example of your own to show that um, you know a pairwise independence of three sets is not enough uh, to say that the three sets are independent or three events. I mean the three events are independent, right. You should be able to construct and as I said that um, you know extending this becomes a uh, little more cumbersome and so we will leave it here only. Right now, um, um, exercise two. Uh, of course, I have uh, given you the corrected version. Okay, so this is there, and um, question ten uh, in exercise two. I want to revisit because um, when I was reading it last time, I said that. Um, this needs a little thought and uh, so uh, let us revisit the problem. So, actually you were um, given the data that uh, a battery has a lifetime. So, there is a probability that uh, the battery will last for more than or equal to 10,000 kilometers that probability is given to be uh, 0.8 and the probability that more than last or equal 20, to 20,000 kilometers uh, the probability was given as 0 0.4 and then uh, that it will last more than or equal to kilometers also a probability is associated with it and you were asked to find that if you have bought a battery which is already run for 10,000 kilometers what is the probability that will be uh, running for more than 20,000 kilometers. That means, its lifetime will be more than 20,000 kilometers if it has already run 10,000 kilometers. So, this is a simple case of conditional probability computing the probability that the lifetime. So, if I let L denote the lifetime of the battery, we are wanting to compute the probability conditional probability of the event that the lifetime is more than 20,000 kilometers, given that it is already 10,000 kilo that is it is already 10,000 kilometers old the battery, it has run that much. And so, by a formula, now when you take the intersection of these two, so obviously this is a subset of this and therefore, uh, the intersection simply becomes L that means, you are wanting the, uh, the lifetime to be greater than or equal to 20,000 kilometer, when it has already run for more than 10,000 kilometers. Right. So, the intersection of these two would be this, uh, because uh, you want the battery to run 10,000 kilometers and you want the battery to run 20,000 kilometers. The intersection would mean that you want the battery to run for, 20, 000, for more than 20,000 kilometers and so, this is uh, divided by the probability of this event, which is L greater than or equal to 10,000 and therefore, this is equal to 0.4 by 0.8, which is half. So, this is the. So, I just thought that if you have thought about the problem, maybe you have some of you have already done it, but then this is the right answer. Okay. We have talked of conditional probability, but I just thought that should formalize this in, a, in a some more in the sense that uh, you see the we are defining now given given an event A, then we are computing the conditional probability of events conditioned on F, right. So, um, want to show that this is the, the function that you have uh, defined here, the conditional probability function satisfies the three axioms of probability and um, not too difficult to compute uh, to show, because uh, the first axiom requires that this for any event E, the conditional probability uh, with respect to F must be with, with, with within 0 and 1, right. That is the first axiom. So, here um, if you take um, probability E condition on F, then by definition this is this. Now, you see that E intersection F is a subset of F, right. This is a subset of F and therefore, we have already shown remember after um, giving the axioms, we proved some propositions and then there I showed that if a uh, subset is um, if um, a subset is a subset of another uh, subset, then the probability would be. So, that means, here probability E intersection F will be less than or equal to probability F, right. This because uh, this is a smaller event in the sense that this is a subset of this, therefore, probability of this is less than or equal to this. 
as we could easily show, right. Then, uh, and by definition, of course, probability E condition f is non negative, right. This is non negative, this is non negative, so this is non negative. So, therefore, the first axiom is satisfied, hmm. <coughs> because the p intersection f is less than p f. So, I divide by this, this is less than 1 and this is non negative. So, first axiom is satisfied. Now, second axiom said that uh, your uh, probability omega should be 1. So, here for us, because we are conditioning on f. So, the, uh, the corresponding axiom would be that probability, um, oh, okay. uh, oh, 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 no, I should have write, sorry, sorry this should be again the same thing. I have to say that omega condition on f. So, what will this be? This and therefore, now when you take omega intersection f, this will be probability f this is equal to 1. Right. Okay. So, therefore, probability f divided by probability f is 1. So, probability of omega condition on f is 1. So, the second axiom is satisfied and the third one uh, requires an E i intersection f divided by p f. Now, this I can write as see here this is this then uh, because distributive law holds this will go as uh, this can be written as union E i intersection f i belonging to i this thing. Now, because um, E i intersection f are disjoint, since E i's are disjoint, right. I have taken a sequence of disjoint uh, events E i's here. So, E i intersection f are disjoint and so by and, and a probability p, the probability function, the original probability function satisfies axiom 3, right. And therefore, uh, this can be written as summation of probabilities E i intersection f divided by p f, right, which is equal to. So, this can be written as um, summation probability E i condition f, right, i belonging to i. So, the third axiom is also satisfied. Therefore, the conditional probability function is also a probability function, that is it satisfies the three axioms. Okay. Uh, now, again I just want to continue working, because conditional uh, uh, conditional probability function is an important concept. So, again a little elaborated uh, example that I would be two gamblers. Oh, okay. oh here um, fine. So, this problem would be coming after I define for you um, the uh, conditional probability. Now, I want to discuss um, uh, the gambler's Rouen problem, which is an interesting example of uh, conditional probability, use of conditional probability. So, let us see, uh, there are two gamblers A and B, and they bet on the outcome of the uh, toss of a coin. Right? Now, if um, on each toss, if uh, on each toss, if H occurs, that means, if the head shows, then A collects 1 unit from B, and if tail occurs, that means, if T occurs, then B collects 1 unit from A. So, this is all a simple game, you toss a coin and then um, if the head shows A gets the money and if uh, tail shows B gets the money from A. Okay. Now, um, tossing of the coin continues till one of them runs out of money. So, that is the gambler's ruin. right? So, uh, one of them will end up with all the money and the other one will have no money left. So, uh, suppose total money is 15 units, I am just taking a number 15, you will see that through the solution it does not matter whatever the amount of money that they start with and A has i units. So, that means, uh, B will have 15 minus i units within. Okay. Now, tossing of the coin are independent events and we are assuming that the coin is biased. So, therefore, probability H is P and probability is 1 minus P. Well, okay. We will also consider the case when uh, P is half. Okay. Now, uh, we want to find the probability that A ends up with all the money and we have assumed that uh, uh, starting at the starting point A had uh, i units of money with him. Right. So, um, let E be the event that A ends up with all the money and let P i denote the probability, because we are, we are starting the game when A had i units. So, I am just denoting it by P i, which is the probability of E ending up with all the money. And, I, and A had i units to start off. Right. Now, um, 
uh, we have been using this technique very often, because uh, your uh, when you are tossing a coin, your sample space is consisting of just h comma t, right, two points in the sample space. And so, you can write uh, p e in terms of conditional probability p given h, and then that means, now this we are saying that uh, we are starting the game. So, the first toss of the coin either results in h or in t. So, this is conditional of e. That means, this is the probability of e. This is the event that a ends up with all the money starting with i units, when the first toss results in head. So, this is that event. right? So, that into p h plus this is again the similar interpretation that a ends up with all the money, when the first toss of the coin shows a tail. Right. So, this is this into p t. Now, when the first toss of the coin gives you a head, then a collects one unit from b. So, therefore, the money at the end of this after the first toss, a ends up with money i plus 1. Right. And if the first toss shows a tail, then a will have to give one unit of money to b, and therefore, he will have i minus 1. So, therefore, if I as I said in the beginning, I am denoting this by p i, because a had i units of money when the game started. So, therefore, this equation can be rewritten as p i is equal to p i plus 1, because this will be then the probability that now a has uh, i plus 1 units, and uh, the, we want to compute the probability that a ends up with all the money, right? and then uh, this into p probability of getting a head. Then here um, a will lose 1 unit of money to b, so it will be p i minus 1 into 1 minus p. So, 1 minus p we can also write as q. Now, I can since p plus q is 1, I can multiply this by p plus q and uh, write this equation in this way. Right, and then rearranging the terms, that means see p i plus one minus p p i I bring here, and p i minus q I take to this side, so I get this equation, right, and that gives me that p i plus one minus p i is equal to q by p into p i minus p i minus one. So I get a recursive relationship between these p i's, okay, and boundary conditions are that if p had no money. Obviously, the probability of his ending up with uh, any money is zero because he will not be able to uh, play the game, right? So p zero is zero, and p fifteen, because the moment he has uh, fifteen, he has won the game, and so the probability is one. So p fifteen is one, okay, and p zero is zero, right? So therefore, now uh, you we use this recursion, and we start with i equal to one. So when i is equal to one. This will give me p 2 minus p 1 is equal to q upon p, p 1 minus p 0. So, p 0 is 0, and therefore, uh, I get this equation. Then, when I put i equal to 2 in this recursion, I will get p 3 minus p 2 equal to q by p, p 2 minus p 1, but p 2 minus p 1 from here is q by p p 1. So, it will be q by p whole square p 1, and so this way you can go on writing the uh, differences. So, p 15 minus p 14 will therefore, become q upon p raised to 14, because whatever the number here that is 1 less than this. So, the power of q by p is 14 into p 1. Right. Adding up we obtain, so now I add up all these equations, then you see these things will cancel out in pairs right? and you will be left with p 15 minus p 1 but p 15 is 1. So, this is 1 minus p 1 is equal to and on this side q by p you can take outside. So, it will be 1 plus q by p plus q by p whole square and so on up to q by p raised to 13 into p 1. right? And now, this is a geometric series. I can write down the sum. So, this will be 1 minus q by p raised to 14 in upon 1 minus q by p. Now, this is a finite geometric progression. So, therefore, it does not matter. The only thing I need is that I can do this, if q by p is not equal to 1, right? because otherwise I will be dividing by 0. So, if q by p is 1, then p 15 minus p 1, you immediately get is 14 p 1. In the last equation, you submit, substitute q by p as 1 everywhere. Then, uh, and so from here, you will get p 15 is 15 p 1, right? because p 1 gets added here, and therefore, p 1 is 1 by 15. And now, you can easily compute your p 2, p 3 and p i. Okay. By going backwards, you can compute your uh, this thing. Fine. 
So, we consider the case when q by p is not 1, in that case um, what we got from the uh, uh, last slide is 1 minus p 1 is q by p, 1 minus q by p raised to 14 upon 1 minus q by p using the geometric progression uh, series sum. And so, um, uh, if you take p 1 to this side, then you get this and now you just simplify and after simplification you will get that 1 minus q by p raised to 15 upon 1 minus q by p into p 1 is 1. So, p 1 is 1 minus q by p upon 1 minus q by p raised to 15. Right. And so, the required probability again from your recursion equations you will immediately get that required probability p i that means, when uh, a started with i units of money would be 1 minus q by p raise to i upon this, because that sum will be up to q by p raise to i minus 1 and so you will get this. So, you will substitute for uh, uh, p 1, so 1 minus 1 minus uh, q by p will cancel out and you will get this. right. So, now if you want to find the probability that b ends up with all the money replace p by q and i by that means, right, because now for b the p is q and the money that b starts with is 15 minus i. So, when you make these two replacements, you will again get the formula for computing the probability that b ends up with all the money, right. Okay. Um, now, again uh, continuing with uh, uh, some more results on conditional probability. So, this is proposition 2.5. What we are saying is that suppose uh, you are given that um, uh, uh, conditional probability of A given B is 1, then you can show that conditional probability of B complement given A complement is 1. Hmm. So, here I could have also given this as an exercise, but I just show, thought I will show you some more ways of doing it and then you can apply it to for example, um, I think you can show that conditional probability of A complement given B will also be you can compute or okay, that will be independence fine. Right. No. So, right now just look at uh, the definition. So, the uh, conditional probability of A given B is given by this. Now, since this is equal to 1, it follows that uh, probability A intersection B is P B. So, the moment you get this result, you can see that a probability A union B, which is written as P A plus P B minus P A intersection B. This will, um, uh, because this thing is 0 P A intersection B minus P B. So, it reduces to P A. So, therefore, your probability A union B reduces to P A. right? And therefore, um, when you take the complement of A union B. So, probability of A union B complement will be 1 minus P A which is nothing but p uh, probability of a complement and so um, and then again by your de morgan's law we had seen that a union b component will be a component i mean uh, complement is a complement intersection b complement so this probability is therefore uh, probability of a com a uh, complement right and hence um, your probability of b complement conditioned on a com complement is this. Now, since these two things are the same, therefore, this reduces to 1. So, one can go on and therefore, now the idea would be that you should get interested enough to try out many more results uh, related to conditional probability, solve more examples. Okay. Now, uh, final uh, result on conditional <laughs> probabilities. Now, this is conditional independence. Remember, we defined independence of two events. If the uh, probability of the uh, intersection of the two events is equal to the probability of the product of the individual probabilities. Now, is same thing gets extended. So, we say that E 1 and E 2 are said to be conditionally dependent, given that event f has occurred. So, if uh, probability E 1 conditioned on E 2 intersection f is probability E 1 conditioned on f. That means, the occurrence of E 2, the same uh, definition that we gave for independence of two events, occurrence of um, E 2 has no bearing on this probability. Right. So, that means, you when you condition it on E 2 intersection f, it is the same as uh, conditioning on f and E 2 has no role to play. Right. Now, in fact, so we will just write it out in a, so this is one definition, but you can uh, come to a better result and this is, uh, we say that <coughs> 
E 1. So, therefore, by definition E 1 condition E 2 intersection f this probability can be written in this way right. And this is given to be by the definition of E 1 E 2 being conditional independent, conditionally independent this is probability E 1 conditioned on f right. So, therefore, from these two you get that uh, this probability is equal to E 1 f and this um, probability of E 2 intersection f I can write as E 2 conditioned on f into p f right. So, this is the result and uh, this one also again now I can condition on f. So, this will be probability E 1 intersection E 2 uh, conditioned on f into p f and this. So, p f p f cancels out because remember whenever you talk of conditional probability with respect to an event then that probability has to be positive otherwise um, you cannot define it. So, of course, it is understood that p f is greater than 0. So, therefore, I can cancel out p f here and I will be left with probability of E 1 intersection E 2 conditioned on f is the product of the individual conditional probabilities that is probability E 1 conditioned on f into probability E 2 conditioned on f. So, this is uh, you just extend the uh, original definition of independence of two events to in the same way. And so, I um, will take up uh, now an example, a little elaborate example to show you the use of conditional uh, independence. After defining conditional independence of two events with respect to the occurrence of another event, uh, I will now take up this example. It may look a little complicated, but uh, it shows good uh, good use of uh, of condition concept of conditional independence. So, here uh, again this example I have taken from Sheldon Ross. Um, uh, surprisingly, this book uh, uh, this I will give you the reference later on has lot of uh, new and innovative examples and therefore, I am uh, using uh, quite a few of them here uh, in this course. Uh, so, now consider the situation when there are k plus 1 coins in a box right and uh, you the probability of choosing the ith co the ith coin show there are um, k plus 1 coins in the box and uh, if i pick up uh, the ith coin and toss it then the probability of its showing a head ith coin shows a head is i by k and i varies from 0 1 to k so that means you can see that when i is 0 that means, if you pick up the 0th coin, then the probability of it showing a head is 0, which means both sides must be tails. Then if you choose the, uh, if you happen to choose the second coin, the probability of it showing a um, head would be uh, 2 by k, right. And similarly, uh, the if you choose the coin, the kth coin, if you choose, I mean in the k plus 1th coin, which has the number k, then the probability of it showing a head would be k by k, which is 1. So, probably this particular coin, the k plus 1th coin is uh, uh, having head on both sides. So, whatever it is, the situation is this. Now, a coin is randomly selected from the box and is repeatedly tossed. This should be repeatedly L y. Uh, if the first, so let me just uh, make the correction here. So, it is repeatedly tossed. Okay. If the first n tosses all result in heads, what is the conditional probability that the n plus first head toss will also result in a head. So, that means, I pick up a coin at random from the uh, coins which are there in the box, then I repeatedly toss it and if the first n tosses have shown heads, then I want to compute the probability that the n plus first toss will also result in a head. So, let us see, we will start uh, finding out how to compute this probability. So, suppose C i is the event that the i th coin is initially selected and this could be any of the 0, 1 to k numbered coin, right. Uh, then f n is the event that the first n tosses resulted in uh, heads. This is the and then h is the event that we want. So, n plus first toss results in head. So, I want to compute the conditional probability of h given f n, given that f n has occurred. So, we have had n tosses and now I want to compute the probability that the n plus first toss will also be a head, will show a head. And this is the expression, so I am going to derive it for you. Since, one of the k, k plus 1 th coin will be selected, right. So, then f n can be written as f n union c i, because 
at least one of the coins. So, th this probability, probability of C i union C i, i varying from 0 to k will be 1, right. So, f n can be written as f n union i varying from 0 to k C i, and therefore, uh, probability h conditional f n, which is can be written as this, then from f n I can write this expression union f n intersection C i, right. And uh, again by the distributive property of uh, intersection and union, I get that uh, this can be written as probability of union i from 0 to k h intersection f n intersection c i, right, because this is this is this. And um, uh, then uh, this because you see um, all the c i's are mutually exclusive, right, because uh, one of the coins will get selected. So, therefore, um, these uh, these events become mutually exclusive, and so um, uh, the probability of the union can be written as sum of the probabilities i varying from zero to k h intersection f n intersection c i divided by p f n. So, right now, this one I can write in terms of conditional probability as h condition f n intersection c i into probability f n intersection c i divided by p f n. Right then um, this remains this, this again I can write in terms of conditional probability C i condition f n into p f n. So, p f n p f n cancels, because f n is a uh, given event. So, therefore, probability f n cannot be 0. And so, I get this expression, which is written here. Right? Okay. Now, it is reasonable to assume that repeated tosses of the ith coin are conditionally independent. This is where I am using the concept that means repeated to assume that the repeated tosses of the ith coin are conditionally independent with respect to f n. That means, see I am considering the case when a coin was picked up randomly, then it resulted in n tosses showing heads. And now, when I toss further, So, then they will be independent of conditionally independent of f n, okay, which means that probability h condition f n intersection c i is actually probability h condition c i only. So, f n has no real role to play here, right. This is what our definition of remember we said that E 1 given E 2 intersection f if I wanted to say that E 1 and E 2 are conditionally independent with respect to f, given that f has occurred, then this is probability E 1, uh, sorry, f. That means, E 1 and E 2 are conditionally independent when f has occurred. So, then um, uh, E 2 has no role to play on the occurrence of conditional happening of E 1 given f on the so the probability would be independent of the of, of uh, the um, uh, event E 2. So, the same thing here we are saying that here um, f n because it is conditional on f n. So, this probability is uh, has the f n has no role to play here and so probability h given C i. So, this is what we are assuming here and therefore, uh, each of this probability is i by k. Right. So, now uh, that means, I can now uh, apply this in the formula here and um, this is um, i by k. So, that means, you are getting uh, because you have got uh, n, uh, n heads have shown up and probability of each head is i by k and I am assuming that the tosses are conditionally independent. So, therefore, uh, this is i by k raised to n and the uh, n plus first uh, toss gives you a head will be 1 upon k plus 1, because there are uh, there are uh, k, k plus 1 coins there. And uh, so, um, sorry. So, this, this, this probability is uh, what am I writing here? Yeah. C i f n. So, h given f n. So, let me just uh, check out here this is um, C i f n, right. So, a probability of picking up the ith coin. And so, again uh, if you just pick up the ith coin that probability should be 1 upon k plus 1, because any of these coins are equally independent. Remember, a coin is randomly selected. So, that means, any of the coins is equally likely when you pick up from the box. So, therefore, the probability of picking up 
a coin is uh, i by k plus 1. So, therefore, this becomes this and similarly here. Yeah, so actually what is happening is that uh, C i f n, uh, yes I missed out on this part. So, probability C i given f n I have rewritten as this. So, this is probability f n condition C i into P C i and then this is um, sigma j varying from k 0 to k f n. So, the probability f n I am writing in this way f n condition C j into P C j. So, this is where, so now probability f n given C i as since the things are uh, conditionally independent, the probability of picking up a head remains the same. So, when you want to pick up n heads, this will be i by k raised to n and probability c i will be 1 upon k plus 1, right. And then here similarly, this is summation. So, j varying from 0 to k, j by k raised to n and uh, 1 upon k plus 1, because now here your j is varying. This corresponded to the ith coin that you have choose, chosen. So, this is the thing. And so, this is just a competition. I wanted to show illustrate, maybe you can say that it is a engineered problem or whatever it is, but uh, somehow you could use make use of the uh, concept of conditional independence and arrive at this result. And again, through uh, methods of calculus, you can actually show that if k is large, then this probability is approximately equal to n plus 1 upon n plus 2. Okay. So, therefore, it gets simplified when you have a large number of coins in the box, but otherwise um, uh, yeah. So, this were uh, continuously you broke up the. So, here um, in this expression yes uh, C i uh, conditional f n this also I had to rewrite uh, in this decomposed form and then apply the uh, probabilities to get this expression. So, that was uh, missing here. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So, this is one, uh, this is an example to um, and uh, often there will be situations when you uh, would be coming across the concept of conditional independence. Let me discuss exercise 2 with you. Uh, again, I will just try to give you brief hints. So, anyway probability the ex uh, question 1 says that you have to um, uh, compute the probability that only uh, exactly one of the events E and F occurs and that is equal to probability E plus probability F minus 2 and of course, when we say uh, minus 2 probability E F that means E intersection F. So, that notation is also acceptable you do not uh, write the sign uh, you know the intersection sign you simply say E F. So, that is what it means right. Now, if uh, E F and G are 3 events then you have to find expression. So, again I am just wanting you to uh, be familiar with the, <coughs> the uh, how you write express events in terms of your complements union and intersection. So, here I want you to write uh, uh, find expressions for the events. So, that of the three events E f and g only E occurs. So, if you have to write this then in the two you have to write exactly two of them occur right exactly two of them occur. So, the third one should not occur. So, you can imagine that you will have to use unions and uh, complements right. Now, in question 3 this is actually uh, very simple the, the uh, slash sign the condition sign is uh, sort of uh, dim, but anyway. So, this says that if probability a is greater than 0 then show that probability of a intersection b condition on a is greater than or equal to probability a interse intersection b condition on a union b. So, that is very straightforward actually. And now, you have to show that p of a intersection the conditional probability of a intersection b given a is greater than or equal to probability of a intersection conditional probability of a intersection b given that um, a union b has occurred. So, it is very simple because you see uh, a is a subset of a union b and as we have already uh, discussed that probability of a union b will be greater than or equal to probability of a right. And in the left hand side the when you compute the conditional probability you will have a in the denominator uh, uh, in the denominator the numerator is probability a intersection b because a intersection b intersection a is again a intersection b. So, this is what actually you have to figure out and the similarly on the right hand side uh, the numerator is the same, but um, denominator would be uh, probability of a union b and since probability a union b is bigger or equal to probability a you have the inequ required inequality. 
So, uh, I just gave it to you to be able to just you know figure out these things and therefore, um, then you can answer the question. So, if you write out the expressions, you can immediately uh, give the answer to this question. Now, uh, problem 4 is from uh, Sheldon Ross, actually it should say Sheldon Ross or Ross Sheldon. In answering a question on a multiple choice test, <coughs> you know where you have more than one choice and you have to take the right one. A student either knows the answer or she guesses. Let p be the probability that she guesses. Assume that a student who guesses at the answer will be correct with probability 1 by m, where m is the number of multiple choices, right. Because if she is guessing, she does not know. So, each any answer out of the m choices, any one of them is equally likely. So, the probability is 1 by m. What is the conditional, uh, conditional probability that a student knew the answer to a question given that she answered it correctly? and I have given the answer here. So, now what are we saying? What is the conditional? So, please um, enter probability. What is the conditional probability that a student knew the answer to a question given that she answered it correctly? So, use the concept of conditional probability and then uh, you should be able to do it uh, right. And now, again uh, this problem is from uh, Sheldon Ross. At a certain stage of a criminal investigation, the inspector in charge is 60 percent convinced of the guilt of a certain suspect. Okay. So, his uh, uh, conviction is that uh, the 60 percent, that means 0.6 is the probability of the person being guilty. Now, suppose that a new piece of evidence shows that the criminal has a certain characteristic such as left handedness, baldness, brown hair etcetera. So, it turns out that uh, through some uh, eyewitness who may have seen the criminal some doing the act, um, the uh, eyewitness can only say that uh, the person was either left handed, one of the conditions uh, uh, characteristics uh, is owned by the cr uh, criminal. So, is uncovered. So, through some facts it is found out that the whoever committed the crime uh, has one of the characteristics. right? If 20 percent of the population possesses this characteristic, that means, whoever in a town uh, um, crime has taken place and so, uh, what they are saying is that 20 percent of the population possesses this characteristic. How certain of the guilt of the suspect should the inspector now be? It should again instead of how it should be now be, if it turns out again S, if it turns out that the suspect is among this group. So, now this is the situation for computing the base, com, uh, base probability, because you see the first the initially the inspector is 60 percent convinced of the guilt of a certain person. Now, uh, it has been known that uh, the criminal possessed some characteristic, which it turns out that uh, this suspect has that characteristic. So, therefore, the probability of uh, the suspect being a criminal would go up. And so, the posterior probability after knowing that the um, uh, criminal possesses the uh, characteristic uh, will go up. So, therefore, you want to uh, I want you to compute the posterior probability here. Uh, problem 6 says a parallel system functions whenever at least one of the components work. Consider a parallel system of n components and suppose that each component independent independently works with population 1 by 2 find the conditional probability that component work 1 works given that the system is functioning. So, here you have to use concept of independence and uh, conditional probability. So, um, problem 7 says that you have to um, either um, prove or give counter examples to the following statements which are self explanatory, you should be able to either show that uh, the statement is valid, otherwise you construct examples to show that it is not. Now, problem 8, we I am asking you to show that if E, F and G are independent, then you have to show that E is independent of F union G. See, remember now here I am using the uh, definition of three events being independent. So, you have these four conditions that will be satisfied and then you can easily show that E is independent of F union G. In fact, uh, you can uh, whatever subsets you find by operation of you know taking intersection union or uh, complement and then taking operations on those, uh, you can show that E will be independent of any of that uh, any of such uh, event, which is founded by 
uh, which is obtained by uh, doing the operations of intersection complement and so on from f and g. So, this is what we are saying here. Now, store A, B and C have 50, 75 and 100 employees and respectively 50, 60 and 70 percent of these are women. right? Okay. So, that means, uh, uh, store A has 50 employees and of which 50 percent are women. So, you can immediately say that 25 are women. Similarly, 75, so 60 percent of uh, the employees in store B are uh, women and then 70 percent of the employees in store C are women. right? Um, resignations are equally likely among all employees regardless of sex. One employee resigns and this is a woman, what is the probability that she works in store C. So, now here again I am asking you to uh, you use Bayes formula to compute the probability. Okay. So, one employee resigns that is given and this is a woman. So, this is also given that means, a woman employee resigns, you have to find the probability that she works in store C. Tenth, the probability that a new car battery functions for over 10,000 kilometers is 0.8. The probability that it functions for over 20,000 kilometers is 0.4, and the probability that it functions over 30,000 kilometers is 0.1. So these are all conditional probabilities. If a new car battery is still working after 10,000 kilometers, what is the probability that its total life will exceed 20,000 kilometers? and then its additional life will exceed 20,000 kilometers. So, problem 10 we will have to answer, yeah, okay. uh, maybe we will leave out problem 10 from here and we will revisit it later on, but problem 11 you can answer easily. Suppose that a person chooses a letter at random from reserve. So, instead of chosen it should approve. suppose that a person chooses a letter at random from reserve that means, it can be any of the letters R, E, S, V and then chooses one at random from vertical. What is the probability that the same letter is chosen? So, this of course, is your earlier from counting the probability in the number of combinations that are favorable to the this thing. That means, see the two letters that are common between the these two words are R and E that is it. right? So, you have to uh, uh, now find out the number of ways in which uh, R will get selected from both, both or E will get selected. And you can see that for example, in the first word reserve R appears twice out of um, you know R E S E R V E and um, R in vertical appears only once. So, you can accordingly find out the probabilities and then find out that and since uh, the uh, operation of choosing a letter from reserve and from vertical are independent events the combined the required probability would be the product of these two okay. Mm -hmm.